hi everyone welcome back to my channel today we are going to learn how to make this beautiful and textured beanie it has a ribbed edging and it has a very rich texture um it also has this fluffy pom-pom and i'll be showing you how to make that later on in the video so let's get started for this project you'll need a five millimeter crochet hook yarn and for the yarn i'm going to be using winter king it's a four player acrylic and you'll need about two skins of this yarn it's 50 grams and then um you'll also need a pair of scissors a dunning needle and a measuring tape i'll be taking some measurements for you to reference to your work so that we get the same exact fitting you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to start by making a slip knot. And now we are going to make a chain of 46. So the 46 is how long your bini will be from this point all the way to the tip before the pom pom. So we are going to be working the chain that comes right from here all the way up. So if you want it longer, go ahead and chain more, but I'm going to make a chain of 46. So after your chain of 46, this will measure about, I told you I'll be measuring everything so that you can reference to your work. This measures about 11 inches when it's not stretched, but if stretched, it goes up to around 14 to 15 inches. So after your chain of 46, you are going to go into the second chain from the hook and place one single crochet and then continue to single crochet until you have a total of 10 single crochets all together so we have one two three into the next chain four five six seven eight nine and ten so when you have your ten single crochets you are going to chain one skip the next chain and place a bin stitch into the next chain so skip this and go into this and the bin stitch is insert your hook pull up a loop you have two loops on your hook yarn over insert your hook into the same exact chain pull up a loop and yarn over pull through all so that's our very first bin stitch then you're going to chain one skip the next chain bin stitch into the next insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all chain one skip one chain and then into the next chain place a bin stitch and we are going to repeat this all the way to the end of our row placing bin stitches all the way to the end of our row one
after working your um, last bean stitch I have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 17 bean stitches and then you're going to chain one and we have one last chain here you're going to place a bean stitch in it like that so you have a total of 18 bean stitches all the way across your row plus your chain one that we made before we started the bean stitch and then your 10 single crochets at this point so after this you're going to go to row two and for row two you're going to chain one turn your work and you're going to be placing bean stitches into these spaces that are next to the bean stitches not into the chain one spaces but into those spaces that are created you can see them here we have this one here we have this one here those are the spaces where we're going to be working our bean stitches so after your chain one turn you're going to go into the first bean stitch and place a bean stitch insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop and yarn over pull through all chain one bean stitch into the next bean stitch chain one bean stitch into the next bean stitch so it gets easier the moment you get to know how to work the stitch and you're going to work until you reach the very last bean stitch at the base before the chain one space that separates the bean stitches from the single crochet stitches So we are coming to the, our very last bin stitch and you can see it's this one because after that there's a chain one and then the single crochet stitches this is the very last bin stitch so after your chain of one you're going to go into that last bin stitch and place a bin stitch like that and then you're going to chain one and skip this next chain remember we made a chain there in between the bin stitches and the single crochet stitches you're going to skip that chain and go into the back loop of the single crochet and you're going to make back loop single crochet all the way until the end so we are working our single crochets into the back loop only for a total of 10 times because we had 10 single crochets for row one so we should be having 10 single crochets back loop only uh, at the end of row two that so we are done with our 10 single crochets back loop only you're going to chain one turn your work this is now row three and we're going to do single crochet back loop only for a total of 10 times so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten make sure there are always ten for the ribbing of the hat now after this you're going to chain one and skip the one chain that we made here on row two there's a chain we made there you're going to skip it and then jump into the bin stitches so you're going to place a bin stitch into the first bin stitch chain one and continue to place bin stitches into each and every bin stitch separated by a chain one space so after your bin stitch you make sure you always chain one and then go into the next bin stitch with a bin stitch so 
Repeat that all the way to the end of row 3. So we've placed our last bin stitch into the last bin stitch from the previous row and this is what we have. So we are going to row 4 and you're going to chain 1 and turn. Row 4 is going to be exactly the same as row 2. So all the even rows are going to look the same and all the odd rows are going to look the same. So for row 4 you're going to place one bin stitch into each and every stitch all the way down to that point where we have the chain separating the bin stitches from the single crochet stitches and then we complete our row with single crochet back loop only whereas row 5 will resemble row 3 that means every every odd row will be the same it's worked from this side all the way up. So we start with the single crochet back loops only and then we chain one. Make sure you always chain one in between here to separate the bin stitches from the single crochet stitches and then go all the way up using bin stitches. So the number of bin stitches will remain the same, will remain constant for each and every row. They don't increase or decrease and the number of single crochet stitches will always remain the same. So you're going to repeat row two and three keep alternating between those two rows until you get a body that measures the circumference of your head so what i considered was between 21 to 22 inches which is the circumference of a normal adult size head so go ahead and keep working these rows and your work will keep building up and i'll meet you back when mine has built up Alright, so I ended up making a total of 55 rows and uh, this measures my 22 inches when I just give it a little stretch. You can see that? 22. And if I give it a full stretch, it goes way beyond 22. It could even go to 26. So that's enough. You don't want a very loose beanie because we are considering this part, it should be able to settle well on your head. So I did a total of 55 rows and I ended on the upper part. I'm going to do one more row to come down to the lower part. That means I'm going to have a total of 56 rows. I'm going to explain why I'm doing this row to come back on the lower side of the work, on the ribbing. So you can make this beanie as wide as you want. There are those people who want a loose fit. If, if you would like something very loose, then you're going to go ahead and make some more rows. But I want mine to stretch to 22 so that it can have a comfortable grip around the head. Because a normal adult head is between um, 21 to 22 inches circumference. So that's what I considered. <laughs> So 
So I'm done with row 56, and that has brought me back to the lower ribbing of my work. Now, uh, I'm going to chain one and leave a very long strand. We are going to need this, so make sure it's long enough. And then you're going to cut and get your darning needle at this point. So after your chain of one, you're just going to pull through this tail that you left behind. So you're going to introduce your darning needle. Mine is here. And you're going to thread it. Now we are going to start joining from this side to this side. So we are going to fold over our work like this. Like that. And we are going to join these two panels so that we form a tube. So let me show you. We are going to just join stitch to stitch when it comes to these lower ribbing stitches. Just keep joining stitch to stitch and you should be having a total of 10 stitches because those were the stitches that we used for the ribbing. 10 stitches and then the chain one that was closer to the bin stitches. So after your 10 stitches, after joining your 10 stitches, you're going to join this stitch the chain that's in between the bin stitches so just go into that space that creates a chain one before you start working your bin stitches and now we are going to start joining the bin stitches so the way i want to do this i just go under the first bin stitch and join and then under the one on the opposite side and join so your work should be facing the right side at this point. It will create a bulge on the lower side, but we are not uh, concerned about that. So under the next bin stitch, and then under the bin stitch on the opposite side. So we are going to continue that. All the way up. And you should be having the same exact number of bin stitches on both sides. So let me just continue all the way up. So you can see that as I join, we are not really seeing the seam line because we are using the mattress stitch that hides that seam line. So continue all the way up and then I'll show you how it looks like at the back. So after this uh, joining, you will have a difference between the wrong side of your work and the right side of your work. It will be very clear to you at this point after doing this joining.
So we are coming to the end and I'm placing my very last stitch onto this side as well as this side. And at this point, we are done with the joining part of the two panels. This is what it looks like on the right side of the work. And then on the wrong side, you will have something like this. So this is the wrong side of our work. You can see it runs all the way down. So keep your work on the right side and we are going to do something different. At this point, you should have a tube like that. Now we are going to use this same exact strand that we have left to gather the top part of our beanie. So you're going to go in and out of every row at the top of your beanie. So you're going to go into row one, out row two, in row three, out row four. Hope you're seeing what I'm doing. In row five, out row six. And that's all you're going to do all the way around. So I just skip a few, like one stitch on the edge. And then you keep pulling through. So we are coming all the way around and I'm going in and out of the last rows until the very first row there. And then you're going to pull your work tight. You're going to pull this string until this hole closes up. You can see that? So you're going to pull it until everything closes up nicely. Make sure you don't break the yarn. Don't pull with so much force. And then from here, you are going to, uh, what I want to do is to join a few stitches across because the hole hasn't closed up uh, totally. So I'll go back and forth to just close up my the top of the beanie very well. Make sure when you're pulling that tail, you don't pull it so much. It could break and then you have to repeat all over again. So I'm just going back and forth so that I close up that gap at the top of the beanie. And this is what you'll have after closing up that gap. And now we are going to attach a pom-pom. I already have a detailed video on how I make the pom-pom. So I'm going to leave the link on the screen and then you, you make that pom-pom and we come back and attach it to our beanie. So after joining here, you're going to just weave in this tail. You're going to make sure it's secure enough. And once you have that, you're going to just cut this yarn. Now you get rid of the darning needle. You're going to get your pom-pom. I hope you've watched the video on how to make it. I have mine here, very ready. Now I have this strand that I used to tie the knot. So you can see, I have these two strands that I used to tie the knot in the middle. Now I'm going to go inside the beanie and push my hook through and grab one of the strands. Like that. 
I pull it through to the other side of the of the bini, which is the wrong side of the bini. So make sure you get it and pull it through. I'm finding a hard time a bit, but make sure you feel the strand on the other side. And then get another spot and pull through the second strand. Because we are going to make a knot on the other side. So I'm having a hard time because the strands are a little bit short. But then I'm going to get another spot. and pull through the second strand. So when I turn my work to the wrong side, make sure I do it carefully. I have pulled two strands on this side. And now I'm going to make sure I tie a very tight knot three times or even five times if you feel like that's secure enough and then you're going to cut your yarn then I have this tail here I think this was from the beginning of my project I'm going to get my darning needle and weave it in So there you have it, our textured beanie is ready to wear and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!